Hey, this is uh, Billy from Perma Pastures Farm. And uh, as you can see right now, I'm dressed like Steve Urkel because we got a little something going on today and that's dealing with these bees behind us. Now, this isn't like anything that I've personally done before. Um, I put the things together, I put the boxes together, but now we're extracting things from these bees that they not may not be happy with us taking. Now, Michelle tells me the best time to do it is in full sun, which it's partly cloudy today, but it's as hot as the blazes out here right now, especially when you're wearing sweatpants and you got stuff underneath it and you got them pulled up plumb to your chest. So there's a certain part of me that's very excited. I love this stuff. And then there's also a part of me that's about as nervous as Donald Trump at an Antifa rally. So I'm gonna have to balance these two. I mean, this is old hat to Michelle. I am a blundering novice doing this. So without that, without you know any further ado, and without me walking all over my tongue because I'm halfway nervous, it's time to get down to brass tacks. We're gonna take this honey. Hopefully there's some in there. If not, then we, we just, we'll come back another time. Okay, what we're looking for here is whether or not these frames are capped, meaning that there's wax all over the outside of it. Now, this first one here, it's capped on this side, meaning the bees are pretty much done with it. And when we turn it over and we look a little bit closer, it's not capped. And you don't want to eat that because it could potentially make you sick. Plus, it's irresponsible, I think. Now, this one here, this one here, completely capped. And we can take it. So when it's all said and done, when we check all of these hives, it's really, we walk away with two frames, which is pretty darn good. And we put some empty ones in there to replace them. Okay, so I'm using nothing more than a bread knife to knock off this cap, and I'm running it down both sides. I saw this on the internet. There's a bunch of different ways to go about this. So we just knock off the wax. There's a little bit of honey on there, but we'll come back to that in a minute. But we're getting it all set up to go inside this centrifuge here. This is nothing special, just something we picked up at a Tractor Supply. I think William picked it up a couple of years ago. And all we're going to do is stick it in there, uh, put the lid on it, and it's going to spin itself, and it's going to sling all that honey over the inside of those walls. So cranky, cranky, crank. And then once that's done sufficiently, once we get the honey off that one side, we'll take it out, flip it around, and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, here's the stuff you saw me knock off. Um, I'm taking it out of that sheet pan and I'm just gonna stick it in a strainer. And we'll let that, you know, over time it takes a little bit and it helps if it's a little bit warm in there, it seems. So it'll strain out real slowly and it'll go through that strainer and we'll capture it in that bowl. And here we are, this is, um, this is coming out of the, uh, that centrifuge. How beautiful is that? So we're basically gonna straighten this honey, stick it in jars, and that's a wrap. All right, so it's a couple of days later. The honey has been extracted from the frames, and you can probably see that, that little yellow in the background. I got the frames sitting up there, 
and we gave it back to the bees to clean off. Why? And folks, I think this is profound and important because it affects me greatly, at least my mindset. Um, when we harvest things, we have a tendency, at least I know this is one of my most tragic flaws, we have a tendency to want to harvest everything. Um, you take the honey off the frames and you're thinking, oh, look at all that wax. Look at all the wonderful things I could do with it. Well, this is the side of the wax that came off so I could access the honey. And if you look closely, you'll see a little bit of honey in there. And inside this centrifuge, you can't really see it here, but there's a fair amount of honey on the inside. Now, could I take all this out and extract every bit of it? Sure, I could. But that would also be engaging in what, at least to my estimation, what Jeff Lawton calls trophy hunter mentality. And that's always been a big problem of mine. Just because you see a tree out there, you think, oh, shoot, I can get all the apples off of it. You know, maybe our Western construct and the way we think about things in the West isn't always helpful. Maybe I should leave some back. You know, some would even say that's a biblical tenet. Um, other faiths, you know, I think they, I think they have, I think there's something to be said in their faiths as well regarding stripping everything. You know, maybe that's, that's in large part why, why this world is the way it is today. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to undo some of the lifelong programming that I have in terms of harvesting. Now uh, that's always applied to me as it pertains to hunting. I don't necessarily want the biggest buck out there. I want something that's going to taste well and do well in the freezer. So I've never been one to go after trophy, um, trophy species, let's say. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it on top of those hives over there. And we're going to allow the bees to take back what they harvested to begin with. Um, just like we leave the wax in the frames. I could take it all off, but that puts the bees right back to square one and rebuilding it. Whereas I can take what's in here, walk over there, give it to the bees, and allow them to be more of a partner than I would have been in the past. Folks, that's that beauty of permaculture. That's recognizing that, you know, we give back. We give back to nature. And we give back to each other. We give back to our animals. We give back to anything and everything within this system. We even give back in the form of compost that these chickens are making right now. So it's a, it's a synergy, it's a partnership. At least I like to think so. So with that said, let's get over here and give it back to the bees. Maybe they won't light me up. Maybe in my little peace offering here will prevent me from getting, getting wiped out. Okay, so here are the two frames that uh, we left over there with the bees yesterday. Now it was touch and go because it did rain, but not before those little bees cleaned off everything. Every little bit of honey that was in these frames, all of the honey that was in this frame is now back with them. So I'm sure if they could tell me, they would say, hey, thanks a lot, bro. Thanks for not taking everything. So. If you, if you weigh it all out, I mean, wow, could I have gotten a, even a, a bumper crop of honey out of this thing if I wanted? Sure. But what's the cost? I think we would have set them back. I mean, like I said, I'm still a novice in, in this whole beekeeping thing, so I'm learning. It's one of the things I've been most reluctant in dragging my feet in this whole process of learning. But as I learn more, I'm becoming more and more confident with it. And I'm learning a lot, too not only through the local beekeeper association, but honestly through my wife and son who know considerably more than I do at this. So, uh, you know, wow, what an adventure. So yeah, we can take these, I'll dry them out. And uh, I guess next time we come out and extract honey, we'll put these back in. So at least, hey, we've got them halfway there in the, in the starting the next process. So we're trying to work in partnership with these guys instead of just extracting and you know, and taking everything, overcoming my Western mentality. So that's an ongoing process. <laughs> Not a long laborious type video of a how-to. This is just more of a, William, check out that hummingbird right there. And he's looking for that feeder. You see him? Mm -hmm. Flight pull it. Went over there, he's at the feeder. Huh.
Okay, that was an unexpected but wonderful distraction. I mean, if you don't love hummingbirds, check your pulse. So here we are interrupted by the hummingbird. I mean, how how appropriate considering what we're holding right here. I don't know if hum hummingbirds eat honey, but they should. Maybe not mine, but they should eat honey. I mean, it's that awesome. Anyway, this is our first vintage from North Carolina. And don't worry, Greg, I'll be sending you some. You too, Granny. There's not a whole lot in this one, but you know, it is something to be said when you get almost three quarters of a gallon of honey out of two frames. Now, just kind of repeating what I went through before, we could have possibly taken more, but we don't want to get into what Jeff Lawton calls trophy hunter mentality. So we're taking what, what makes sense right now. And because so many of those hives, remember, if you go back and look at some of the earlier videos, we had a number of hives that of swarms actually that we captured from these hives some of them were um you know we we weren't sure where they came from and as we got closer and closer to it that hummingbird is flying around again look at this he's right above me no hummingbird you can't have the honey but we got feeders up here for you jack that is so cool here we are we got from two frames quite a bit of honey, which we really didn't expect a whole lot considering how many times these hives split themselves and, and the split that we made ourselves and brought in another queen. So the fact that we got honey this early is probably pretty darn cool. And for a novice at this, somebody like me, who, you know, isn't at all adept at how this sort of thing works, you know, I'm, I'm starting to get my sea legs out of it. And it's pretty cool to get a harvest no matter what. So until next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.